Hey guys, Michael from Fire and Brilliance, and today's episode, I'm wearing blue, so you know what that is going to be about. It's going to be about the blue sapphires. <laughs> Gonna definitely break down all the sapphires but today's episode specifically will be about blue sapphires and let me start with this first of all I do apologize for my chicken scratch I try my best to write as neatly as possible uh, but be, with that being said we've already been working with the media team so that there will be a bunch of little pop-ups in terms of graphics to make it way easier for you guys to read okay because I know that's one of the uh, comments to make it easier for y'all but that being said the reason why I write in the back is to help me remember things while while I'm actually going over it. So that being said, it, we are gonna go over the blue sapphire here, okay? So uh, what is sapphire? Well, let's start with the basics. The mineral of a sapphire is made of corundum, all right? So it's a variety of corundum that is actually, uh, be, that's actually able to be uh, cut into a specific gemstone, all right? So with corundum, the way you're able to actually identify if it's blue or pink or whatever, in terms of making it blue, you definitely have to have traces of titanium and in some cases, iron, all right? So that being said, if corundum has these traces of titanium and iron, then typically, the colors of the sapphire should turn blue. That being said, with the hardness and the Mohs scale, so what that does is for the gemstones, and um, well gemstones, it basically measures the hardness of that specific gemstone. So with diamonds, uh, it's actually the top at a hardness of a 10, right? So which makes it very hard. So that's the reason why you can set it on jewelry and we'll be able to wear it for hopefully for a lifetime, right? So as hard as gemstones are, I do want to say this, and it has nothing to do with blue sapphires. It's something, even though it's very hard, all gemstones can actually uh, chip or break. It just depends on how it's worn. If there's enough pressure on anything, it can definitely break, okay? So even of a diamond on a Mohs scale, and it's scaled at a 10, uh, that can definitely even chip even at that level. But that being said, it's very rare uh, unless, you know, there's some kind of brute force touching that gemstone, then that's a different story. But with the diamonds, a 10. A Moist Knight, um, if you've been following the channel, you might already know it's a nine and a quarter to a nine and a half. And Sapphire, uh, which is a natural mineral, and a ruby, it's a nine. So the reason why I put ruby and sapphire next to each other is if you've been following, uh, if you actually watched last year, uh, last week's episode, you will notice that a ruby is actually a sapphire. Both are made of corundum. The only difference between a sapphire and a ruby is anything that is red, okay, that's made of corundum is considered, is called a ruby. Everything else besides a red corundum gemstone will be considered a sapphire. The most popular sapphire is considered a blue sapphire, but then it's also available in pink and yellows and whites, all right? So that being said, a ruby, the reason why it's able to turn red is because the trace of chromium versus a blue sapphire has traces of titanium and iron. So um, that being said, that's a sapphire with a Mo scale and hardness of a nine. So these gemstones are typically very preferred because it's very hard. Right? So if you're actually set on jewelry, then hopefully it'll last you for a very long time as opposed to softer gems where if you're to bang it around and, and especially if you wear an engagement ring or, or on a necklace or an earrings and if, you, and if you're a physical person or if you're an active person, uh, then hopefully that will sustain and maintain over the course of the lifetime that you're wearing it. These are the locations that you can find it in and from Australia to Sri Lanka to Thailand to China, Madagascar, Africa, uh, North America, as well as Burma, all right? So those are some of the main locations where you can find sapphires. Depending where you are, the mixture might be slightly different. So some might be light blue, dark blue, vivid blue, some that might be a little brighter, some might be a little deeper, some might be mixed with a more of a, a greenish hue, some might be mixed with a more of a purplish violet hue, and I'll definitely get into it that. But depending on where in the world and how you find it and where you find it, that mixture might be slightly different, which creates the different colors of the, of the blues, all right? So that being said, Blue sapphires, what does it symbolize? Well, first of all, it's a birthstone of September, 
And the symbolism behind a blue sapphire is of purity and wisdom, all right? So uh, that's just a little fun fact there. Uh, with that being said, let's move on to the next point. How are the prices and how do the prices change when it comes to natural or lab-created sapphires? Well, uh, you know, obviously prices, I've, I've already gone over this a few times in the past, but it's extremely important that I re-emphasize it because especially if you're in the market and you're actually trying to learn about blue sapphires uh, or any sapphire for that matter, there's a few factors that you should consider. And when you do weigh out all of your options, then hopefully it'll justify the price that you're paying for or the prices that you're considering in the market, okay? So a few factors that you should definitely consider is that first of all, is it a lab or is it a natural sapphire? Obviously, if it's a lab, it's created in a lab by man and anything that's created in a lab can be controlled and what I mean by that is that you could control the output you control the input you can't control the uh, amount of time and cost you can control the quality you can control all of that so when it comes to pricing if there's enough that's being made over a specific time frame then hopefully that will reduce the cost so typically when you purchase a lab sapphire of the of a high quality versus a natural sapphire of the similar quality then typically the lab will cost less versus a natural of a very high quality uh, obviously there are natural gemstones or natural blue sapphires that you can purchase for very for a very very low price but then that means the quality might also be extremely low or the price of the natural is less than the lab second point is is it treated or untreated um, now again the a natural, even if you are to purchase a natural blue sapphire, it does not necessarily mean that it's never been treated or modified. What does that even mean? Most gemstones or natural gemstones, most colored natural gemstones are modified or treated or enhanced to actually increase the overall look and feel of that gemstone. So in other words, if you are to purchase a blue sapphire, in many cases in the market, and it's a very common practice in the industry, so it's not uncommon to see this, uh, it's definitely been treated by heat, okay? So by, do, by adding heat to a natural blue sapphire, what it does is it increases the color and also increases the clarity grade of that gemstone. So if you are to, let's for, say for example, if you're to, uh, well you want to purchase a blue sapphire but it's very light blue, most people prefer a darker, vivid, purplish type of bluish color. So in order to make that color, they do actually have to treat it by adding heat and therefore increasing the color and in many instances actually helping out with the clarity grades as well. Okay, so again, although it's natural, it is still, um, basically treated and modified by man through heat and by increasing the color and the clarity and therefore incre increasing the quality on what you can see with the naked eye. Now, if you are purchasing a natural where it's treated or untreated of the same quality, so let's make sure we compare apples to apples, right? So if we're comparing both blue sapphires of very high quality and both are extremely gorgeous in terms of a purplish blue or a, blue, a very dark vivid blue, then if you're comparing, if it's been treated or untreated, obviously if it came naturally that way without any treatment, then that price, the untreated version, will be higher versus the treated version that required heat after it's been mined and cut and polished. So the third point on the prices is the quality of the gemstone. Uh, I went over a few things uh, earlier, is obviously the color, the color of the gemstone is a really blue, is a light blue, is a dark blue, is a greenish blue, is a purplish blue. I mean, what kind of blue is it, right? Most people prefer a specific type of blue. So the color is extremely important. The clarity grade, are there a lot of inclusions? Does it look like there's a, um, you know, some natural inclusions that are inside of that gemstone that really makes it not look as clear? Uh, so most people prefer a very clear gemstone. So the clearer it is, the higher the price. Uh, the carat weight, obviously, the bigger it is. Um, the price should also increase. The smaller it is, the lower the carat weight, the lower the price will be. And obviously the cut of the gemstone as well, okay? So now I want to dive a little deeper when it comes to color since we're talking about a specific 
colored gemstone. Most people, when they're searching for a blue sapphire, they're really looking for a specific type of blue. Now, there's a reason why they're looking for that type of blue. Again, just going back to my point, depending on the traces of titanium and iron, on creating that blue, depending on where you're purchasing it in the world or where it was originally mined from, and depending if it's been treated or untreated, it will create a specific type of a blue color. Most people, what is typically preferred is this. Now, there's a color hue, and this is the preference, right? So there's a primary color and a secondary color when you are able to take a look at a blue sapphire. Typically, the primary color is the dominant blue. The secondary color will come in either purplish or a violet, uh, or a purple rather, or a violet color. And sometimes there's even hints of a greenish blue, all right? So typically the greenish color is not preferred. It's actually a negative when it comes to a blue sapphire. I mean, obviously that's really up to you. Some people will love it and other people don't. But typically when people are looking for a blue sapphire, they do not want to see the greens inside of that blue sapphire. They would prefer a blue purple or a violet. And what is typically preferred is basically a combination of either about 85% blue that's been saturated within the hue and about a 15% purple or violet. So it gives it a very, so, so in other words, a fine blue sapphire can be typically described as a vivid medium dark violet bluish color or a purplish blue, right? So dominantly blue primary blue blue very vivid and dark but with a little hint of purple or violet and that's typically the preferred color of a blue sapphire and again the green is not typically preferred but again there's really no right or wrong answer because the beauty of jewelry is in the eye of the beholder and that's really up to you when you are to wear your jewelry uh, each time I do a Geminar, I want to make sure that I get um, as many gemstones as possible uh, that is as equivalent as possible so that we can compare it as close to each other as much as possible, especially when we're comparing labs versus natural. That being said, I was able to find a 10 by 8 uh, millimeter natural blue oval, a uh, brilliant cut oval, blue sapphire. Uh, it is a natural sapphire uh, to compare it with a lab 10 by 8 blue sapphire as well, okay? So um, that being said, let me go ahead and take this out and kind of explain to you the properties here. Um, now, as I've mentioned earlier, uh, before doing this breakdown, uh, on the whiteboard, uh, sapphires obviously is a gemstone that can be found in nature. Uh, it has many different color types depending on the variety. Uh, this one is blue, but also comes in pinks, also comes in uh, whites and yellows, okay, so, uh, but blues, I would say, is probably the, one of the most popular colors when it comes to sapphires. When people think about sapphires, typically they think about blue. Uh, now, depending on the type of gemstone the ty and the type of rough and how it was cut, uh, sometimes, um, not sometimes, but it actually will come in different shades of blue as well, all right? So uh, you may sometimes see a blue sapphire that's lighter and sometimes very dark. Uh, this uh, one is actually quite dark. Uh, it's more of a vivid, deep blue. Um, you know, if you take a look at it, uh, it looks very, um, like the color of the deep dark ocean, if you will. That, that's what it looks like to me. It's a really beautiful gemstone, especially if you want that really deep dark color of the, and you're into blues, right? So uh, sapphires are gorgeous. Um, you know, obviously, um, most gemstones are gorgeous, uh, if not all, but uh, sapphires um, has a very a beautiful touch to it. It's one of the um, precious, um, gemstones, uh, so it falls into, uh, you know, when people think about colored gemstones other uh, than diamonds, so when they think people think about colored gemstones, they, think about, they typically think about rubies, emeralds, and sapphires, sapphires being part of that, right? So uh, it's a really nice gemstone. Uh, this is a natural. Most colored gemstones, uh, just so that you all can know, uh, are treated. Okay, so in other words, uh, it's color enhanced. Um, so yes, uh, colored gemstones, although they are natural, uh, they can be enhanced through colored treatments, through radiation, through fills, through oils, um, through oiling. Um, I mean, there's a different uh, different ways of actually making uh, colored gemstones look nicer. Okay, uh, so obviously a treated colored gemstone 
the price will be lower than a natural colored gemstone that's never been treated and it is just the way it is. Uh, and the color is still the, uh, you know, if you sometimes if you find a, a blue sapphire with the right color uh, and with the right clarity and it's never been treated, those are very rare and it could be very expensive, okay? So uh, I mentioned this in the past, you know, diamonds have a big name in the marketplace, but colored gemstones, if you find a very beautiful colored gemstone that's never been treated, and it was uncovered and cut that way, it can be even way more expensive than diamonds, okay? Because it's much rarer, all right? So that being said, this is a treated oval blue sapphire at about 10 by eight millimeters in size. And the carat weight for this stone is three, approximately 3.886. Now, uh, that being said, let me go ahead and take out the lab blue sapphire. All right, so here is a lab blue sapphire. There you go. Here's a lab blue sapphire, all right? So the one pro of uh, choosing a lab, other than pricing, of course, and the reason why pricing is lower for a lab is uh, anything that can be controlled. Uh, obviously, the cost can be controlled based on the outputs of the manufacturer, all right? Uh, but that being said, with... Um, with the lab created gemstone, because it is controlled in a specific environment and it's controlled in the way it's grown and and um, created and cut, uh, typically lab gemstones in comparison to natural gemstones are create with, created with very high quality in both color and clarity, all right? So as you can see here, here is a color that is typically very preferred in a blue sapphire. It gives it a very beautiful bluish, bright color. Uh, you can also see the deepness of the color in it as well, uh, but in different angles, you'll see that bluish oceanic color. Uh, whereas if you were to take a look at the ocean during the day and you're able to see through the ocean, and that's the kind of color that you're uh, really looking for uh, when it comes to a blue sapphire. Now, um, it's a really pretty gemstone. This is created in a lab. Uh, obviously, it's a 10 by 8 millimeter as well. Uh, the carat weight for this one specifically is about 3.62 carats. So it's almost the same exact um, size. Let me go ahead and put it side by side for you here. Here is the lab. And here is the natural. Again, they're both the same size. The only difference is one is man-made and one is obviously made in nature, uncovered and cut and polished uh, into, uh, into this gemstone. Um, this one is natural, that one's man-made. The difference here is that this is a natural that's been treated through a heat treatment to enhance the color, all right? So, uh, and that's already, th uh, this is a natural that's already been through a, a treatment process to enhance the color. So I can only imagine how dark it was uh, before uh, it was even treated. All right, so uh, that being said, um, you know, again, I, I'd like to end the segment here by saying there's really no right or wrong answer when you choose gemstones, regardless if it's from diamonds or moissanite sapphires or rubies or emeralds. And it, it, there was really no wrong or right answer when it comes to choosing gemstones if it's lab or natural. It's really up to a matter of your own preference, your ideologies, your, your taste, your budget, your what have you, whatever your style is or even your um, belief in what you want to wear. Um, you know, some people will only prefer naturals and others will only prefer labs. And there's really no right or wrong to it and because to each their own, I truly believe in that, right? So if you're going to buy a lab blue sapphire at this size, a 10 by eight millimeter oval brilliant cut, uh, if you're buying a lab, uh, depending on where you buy it from, who you buy it from, where you shop, if it's a brand name, if it's a trusted source, if it's small mom and pop versus a big company, I mean, it's really up to uh, where you purchase it. Uh, this can run you anywhere between 300, maybe $400 a carat up to an upwards of maybe 600 to $700 per carat. Um, this, um, so if this is about three points, so let's just call it about 500 bucks a carat. If this is at approximately 3.6 carats, um, you're looking at about maybe 1800 bucks or so for, for the lab. Whereas this one is a natural, it's a treated natural. Okay. Um, this one here, uh, if we are to sell it, uh, then this one is approximately about $4,000. Okay. Whereas this one is a natural. 
okay? Uh, the price of this stone in the marketplace at the moment at about a three point, what is this, a th uh, almost a 3.886 carats. It's a deeper uh, bluish color. It's also uh, heat treated, so it's color enhanced. Uh, it's a natural sapphire. Um, this one in the marketplace will probably go anywhere depending again depending on where you buy it who you buy it from where in the world you're buying it from because uh, geography matters and everything matters uh, you know uh, people um, the people you work with matters the supplier matters the brand matters everything matters right. Uh, if it's if you're working with a company with a lot of overhead and they have to actually cover that overhead, they might have to mark up the price and you know so on and so on. And if you're working with a small mom and pop shop, uh, you may take the risk that it may not be natural enough, so they may you know they may reduce the price because they they need the business. I mean, it really depends on the situation. But that being said, uh, this stone here is going to go anywhere between four thousand to approximately about eight thousand dollars. Okay, so it just depends. So again, where you're buying it from. So uh, that's the difference uh, between the two gemstones. So you're saving yourself a, quite a pretty penny if you're, if you're willing to go for a lab. But if you are a natural enthusiast, then uh, that's approximately the price of the blue sapphire here. And again, I just want to emphasize. Or, or remind you that th not all natural blue sapphires will look like this gemstone. Again, let me know your thoughts. Leave a comment below which one you like better, the natural or the lab. Uh, hopefully this provided you with some value. This is the breakdown of the blue sapphire um, here at Fire and Brilliance, and we just want to make sure that we do give you all of the main points. I mean, obviously, there's just so much information on every single gemstone out there. Um, you know, this is typically most of the main points that you should know about, especially if you're in the marketplace, especially if you're looking for a blue sapphire for your necklace, earrings, pendants, yeah, uh, you know, rings, whatever it is, or even if you just want a loose stone. If if you just wanted to know what was handed down to you, if it was an heirloom that was handed down to you, uh, or if you just want to learn because you're into this. So hopefully this provided you some value. Uh, that being said, if you are new to the channel, again, welcome. Uh, definitely help us out by hitting the like button. It definitely helps out the algorithm. It helps our channel increase here. Uh, and if you're obviously been around and you've been watching us. Thank you again for tuning in. Definitely leave a comment below. Let us know what you like. Let us know what you don't like. Is there a specific type of gemstone that you want us to cover? Uh, we will be more than happy to do that for you. We do put all of your comments and suggestions in a list. When there is enough of a request, then we will go ahead and consider that and we'll make a video just for you. All right, so thanks again and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.